Total War is being mummified before our very eyes. We have Total War Pharaoh being announced, and with it, the mummification process of the Total War franchise can continue. And I think that's a pretty good analogy alongside the one that's provided, which is a dung beetle pushing a ball of shit around pointlessly, which might be a metaphor for CA pushing shit around with this franchise. We'll see. But I like the mummification one, because all the internal organs are removed, all the things that make Total War appealing are just pulled out piece by piece and put in jars on a shelf, never to be seen again, leaving a hollowed out corpse. And also, even more importantly, the brains get whisked and pulled out through the nose, are just completely removed. And then it gets covered in layer after layer of bandages to hide the decay which has already begun. And then they spray it with perfume to cover up the rotten smell. So I think that's a bit of a decent analogy or a metaphor as well, don't you think? And here is the splash screen of the website, October 2023, so it's coming out in five months. We're five months into 2023, another five months until this comes out. And we have some slides here. Total War Pharaoh. The old pharaoh was dead and Egypt is calling out for a new leader. And the newest entry in the Total War franchise uncover a breathtakingly vibrant recreation of ancient Egypt during its last golden age. Collapse of a civilization. So that's referring to the Bronze Age collapse, which this game is going to cover. Which Troy was maybe going to cover until they canned it like they did with 3K, maybe, possibly. Who knows? Dynamic battles, become a fierce warrior. Become a fierce warrior. This makes me think Troy and 3K all over again. So you're just fighting battles, getting XP bars to fill up, unlocking points that you dump on trees to have quantitative additions onto your guy as he just runs around one man army killing everything. So it's more spreadsheeting. It's quantitative incrementation. It's not qualitative orthogonal differentiation where new gameplay opens up and possibilities are enabled as you progress through the game. None of that. We don't do that anymore. It takes too much work. People are too dumb when they play this game to be willing to explore that. They need to just have numbers right in front of them. That's what it means to play games now. Yep, this makes me think Troy and 3K and Warhammer all over again. Become a fierce warrior. No, that's not how this works. We're not fighting duels in an RPG. These are armies. Fuck's sake, do you learn? Or brilliant tactician. Alright, we'll see what tactics are possible. In a week, I'm going to be looking. I'm going to be ready to see the gameplay reveal in a week. And I'm going to be scrutinising what tactics I see are possible in this game. And we already have Troy and we have 3K to compare it to. We already know how those games play. And those are historical games. So we're going to be able to see in a week if this game is going to enable tactics or if it's going to just be another Warhammer clone, which is what I anticipate. Happy to be proved wrong. Not expecting to be proved wrong at all. All the evidence suggests that I'm not going to be proved wrong whatsoever. I'm going to be completely on the mark. Again, just like I was with the sieges and Warhammer 3 when I looked at that trailer and saw then that they were just taking that tower defence shit and porting over to the sieges in the base game, the main game. And I was completely fucking right. A year early, it was so obvious. I said it. The other YouTuber shells didn't say it. I was right. And they were wrong. They were just hyping up. So I'm happy to do that again and keep doing it. So long as it's interesting. And this is fucking interesting. I don't see this ever getting boring. Lead massive armies. Yeah, the, the armies are getting smaller and smaller year by year because of this shit. Real-time battles that stretch across the ancient lands of Bronze Age Egypt. This all sounds good. But I need to point out, the setting is irrelevant. We already know that from Troy and 3K. If the game is shit, the setting doesn't matter. The setting is just there to set. You have to actually play the game. And as we saw with Troy, people were excited about the setting. I would say they were quite excited. We'll, we'll get into this in a minute. They were excited. They wanted their Achilles. They wanted their attacking Troy. 
how much have you actually seen of Troy, the city of Troy being besieged and attacked by the Myrmidons and all the rest of it? Did you did you even watch any YouTube videos of YouTubers playing that battle, attacking Troy with Achilles and Myrmidons and having an, a great time, doing doing amazing tactics with heroics? I don't think you did. I don't think you have a single memory of that event, which is surely what Troy is building up to. You play the you play a campaign for fifty hours, hundred hours. You finally get to Troy as Achilles, with all of your armies, and then you you besiege Troy, and it's meant to be fucking epic. Doing that to Kyoto and Shogun 2 could be epic. I've got memories of attacking Kyoto and on Follow the Samurai and having good battles there, but that nah, never happened in Troy, never happened in 3k. People are not having that in Warhammer. Even now I could probably boot up Medieval 2, launch the Crusades campaign, play as one of the Crusaders, hold Jerusalem against hordes of Muslims coming to my gates, Use fire projects and mangonels, have night, night hospitalers on foot, dismounted knights holding the gates, boiling oil, attempt really ambitious KDs. But can't do that in 3k, can't do that in uh, Troy, combat's too shit. <laughs> it's all just buy 19 of the same unit and just defeat stacks brainlessly, so. And also having heroes just kill everything, Travelli just doing cheesy bullshit, so. I'm not expecting this to be any different, and if you are, why? <laughs> why? <laughs> In fact, I have a memory of one YouTuber that actually did a Troy campaign. Only I'm only aware, I can only name one, I can genuinely only name one, and my recollection is that he raged and quit the campaign before he got that far. So that should have sold the game. This is how you use YouTubers, this is how you avail of this resource. You have the game sell itself by having YouTubers doing cool shit with your game and they couldn't even make that happen. So forget people actually buying the game and doing it themselves, which I doubt happened. They couldn't even make it possible for YouTubers to do it. People that are financially incentivized and do this as a job to crunch out these videos of this stuff happening and they couldn't do it. Be prepared for intense changes in weather. Okay, we already had that in... Empire, Napoleon, that was marketed over a decade ago. So we'll see what this means. Dynamic weather and battles. I think we had that in Empire, Napoleon. That directly impact your chances of survival on the battlefield and utilise the threat of fire, which can engulf... We had fire in 3k. That was also an Attila. That was what Attila was marketed as, a big dystopic end of the world scenario when the hordes from the steppes sweep over Europe and destroy what's left of the Roman Empire. So, yeah, this is all kind of sounding like just reusing marketing now. And I've pointed out this kind of marketing before with Troy when they were advertising features from Rome Total War, which was a 15-year-old game at that point, when they were talking about long grass, you know, different types of terrain. Rome Total War already did that 15 years ago. So it's the same again. I think maybe they might just be advertising old features as if they're new, which can engulf armies. I kind of doubt that. I think it's going to just be you stand in an area and the health bars of your units go down a little bit. I don't think it's going to... Nah. Not buying it. Anyone else buying it? Spread destruction throughout forests and settlements. We had that already. Come on. Reusing 3k and Attila features with a new aesthetic to try and bait in the newbies that haven't played any Total War games before to see if they are impressed. That's what I think this is. That's what all this is, I think. Uh, grand strategy of the campaign. Prove you have what it takes to become the greatest pharaoh in history and forge an empire for the ages. Use grand strategy to conquer and defend the rich lands of Egypt, Canaan and Anatolia. Manage an ever-evolving economy, boost your political standing in the courts and develop a military strategy that can counter the looming threat of the Bronze Age collapse. So Egypt... Canaan and Anatolia. So Canaan is the Levant. So that's a relatively small area. Manage an ever-evolving economy. Standard stuff. So it's all pretty standard. We've all ha we've had all this before. And then it shows you Ramses, the Paragon. Warrior Pharaoh. Heroic Resolve. So this is Achilles again. Like the this is another Achilles. This is the Egyptian Achilles. 
speed and intuition, well honed elite units, quick progress, flexible, re plentiful resources, new players, losses are additionally damaging. So this is going to mean minus 25% to morale in the next battle or something, or it's going to mean plus 10% upkeep for 5 turns or whatever the hell, I don't know. They're, they've probably already got this on Warhammer and one of the factions. They're probably just reusing one of the ideas there. This is where it is now, it's just take all the scripts, all the ideas, if you can call them that, and shuffle it around, put it onto new skins and different games and see if people buy it. They did that a lot with Warhammer. Though I don't even play Warhammer, I've, I've never played it really. 20 minutes, one battle, and even I was able to notice whenever they used something from 3k in Warhammer because in 3k there was the the Lou Boo and one of the DLCs for 3k, one of the later DLCs, before they just stopped the DLCs and cancelled the game, pumped and dumped it, there was a DLC with Lou Boo, focused around Lou Boo, and he had the ability to just have infinite movement by winning a battle, so you would just chain your mo your battles by winning them, and you had infinite movement. And then they reused that in Warhammer and sold it as a fucking DLC. So, I expect that there's going to be a lot of that. Again, we're not going to see any novelty or any new way of implementing gameplay, if you can call it that. It's going to be that again. Alright, so here's the FAQ. What's Total War Pharaoh? Factions will be available at launch, 8 factions, Egyptian, Canaanite, Hittite. Where can I play it? How much does it cost? £50, 50 quid, 60 quid, 80 quid, all these additions. And then all these DLCs, they're doing the DLC pumping again, they've got DLCs planned. Look at that, faction packs, 3 of them planned already, 5 months out and they've got, they've got 3 of these planned lined up. And a campaign pack, what is this? Pre-order it guys. 25% discount, so if you are willing to just take the plunge and maybe buy garbage, we'll give you a 25% discount on your possible tart. Potential ball of dung, 25% discount on it, brilliant. What do I get if I pre-order? You get cosmetic packs, alright. So, we had a guy saying on the shithole subreddit in 2022, why everyone was so damn impressed and excited with the Demon Prince reveal and discussion on microtransactions and why we must give CN Sega credit. We must give them credit. And it says here, At no point will any Warhammer 3 player ever have to look at the Demon customization screen and see anything locked behind a paywall. That level of generosity from CN Sega must not go unpointed out by us fans as formerly basic things like character customization has over the years been taken out of the games to be sold back to gamers piecemeal. Sega and CA could have sunk to industry standards and given us crappy base demon body parts that launched to entice us to buy an outfit pack for $10 after the game was out for a month, but they didn't. So, this guy is giving them credit for not doing cosmetic DLC. And what do we have here? Avatar of the Gods cosmetic pack, Heart of the Shardana cosmetic pack, early access for fuck's sake. It never pays to just lick the corporate boot and to just stick your snout right up their arse. And here's what I said about this in February of 2022, a week after this was posted. So he's making a post where he basically throws himself upon the mercy of the fucking publisher. Because that's who honestly calls the shots here. Let's be real. And can you imagine if one of them saw this and thought, holy shit, are we just letting money slip through our fingers by accident? Look at how stupid these little peons are. They think that we're being generous to them. It's simply an oversight that we can now correct. Let's immediately adjust to match the market temperament and start milking these people at the cost, the tiny trivial cost, of not ever having them make cloying, supplicating posts like this on fucking subreddits that are just bootlicker hives. What a massive cost, what a high price to pay. And yeah, that sums up right there. Pathetic shit, because only 15 months later, no wait, when was it? Yep. 15 months later, here we are, and they're now doing what this guy was giving them credit for not doing. 
pathetic, you absolute goober. What a dolt. And someone noticed this thread, bootlocker thread, when it was posted and reposted it to my subreddit, calling it Dystopic Warhammer Thread thanking CA for not selling cosmetic DLC content. And then I pointed out that they are in fact doing exactly that right now. They are now selling cosmetic DLC. Fuck's sake. And this is remarkable as well. See these outfits? We only have an outline at the moment, but this is going to get filled in, I think, as the months go on. This is what they did for Rome 2, I remember that. They would announce the factions one at a time to try and have hype. Fuck's sake, rally point, my god. They made a big deal out of each one. But in this one we have elaborate outfits starting to appear. We have some plumes here, we have horns, this is the big one. And this really makes me think of 3k and Troy with this stuff. And people say, historical guys, but what is the difference? What is the fucking difference? If you have all of this pomp and extravagance and you have these guys basically being one-man armies that run around the battlefield. What is the difference between fantasy fucking historical? What is this nonsense distinction? People need to drop this. I'm see I'm already seeing this being billed as historical, as if that's somehow a good thing. Like, that'll save the game. It won't. It's fucking meaningless. It means nothing. And do you know what this reminds me of? These kinds of outfits? It reminds me of when I saw the mummy and the scorpion king, like this stuff. Like, these jackal-headed Anubis warrior armies. I'm curious if this will be in it to start with or if it will creep in. And there's another one. Another scene that has this. So this is what I think they're trying to tap into with this, this kind of cultural awareness. All the, mum the mummy fanboys, maybe. I suspect it might happen because, of course, with my Rome, it's Gladiator. With Troy, it's the Troy movie with Brad Pitt. And with the Sparta DLC for Rome 2, they totally ripped off a 300, even with the animations that they, they designed, hand, handcrafted for the trailer. The trailer doesn't even make it into the game to mimic 300. This is what they're going for. They're, I think they're just trying to pour over the Warhammer formula to all of this pop culture stuff one at a time and just trying to suck whatever they can out of it. So that's what I'm going to be looking for. I'm going to be waiting for the gameplay video and I'm going to be analysing the gameplay when the time comes and I'm going to be trying to see just how much this resembles Troy or 3K or Warhammer and in any ways that it does I'll be pointing out and if it seems like they're trying to achieve an actually good game here then I'll point that out but I think they're going to just be doing what they've been doing for the past decade and are just pushing shit around trying to get anything to stick or as my analogy went the franchise is dead all that remains is a desiccated corpse that's had all of its viscera all of its substance removed from it and its soul is gone if it ever existed If you like my work to the extent of wanting to support it, then I've got a Patreon just for that purpose. I try to give out perks including insider monthly updates on what I'm thinking and what I've got planned. Special thanks to Matteo Olivetti. <laughs>